Redditors who grew up with strict parents, what was the most absurd rule you had to live by? I was not allowed to use the money cheat on Sims growing up, because that's not how the real world works. I used the cheat once and couldn't explain where all the money I had came from, so I was grounded and had Sims taken away. My mom wouldn't let me open a new milk without her permission, or open anything really without it. Like we would have an extra milk in the garage fridge and I would use the rest of the milk inside. Instead of a normal household where you could just get more, I had to call her and ask. So that meant if she didn't pick up, then I would have to wait for her to call back. The first time I realized this wasn't normal is when a friend went to open a new gallon of milk, and I got super anxious and was like, dude you have to call your mom right now or she'll freak out. She was like, um, my mom will be okay if I need a glass of milk. It suddenly clicked that my mom was a control freak. Plot twist, you were kidnapped and she was scared you would find a picture of yourself on the milk and find out. Go to school, but I won't drive you, get good grades. But don't stay for any extracurricular or sports, because once you get home you have a list of chores to do. Must be perfect, there's a water spot on this fork, you have to redo every dish in the house. I just made food after you vacuumed, you missed all these crumbs, do it again. Why are you still up so late, light off, while trying to get homework done since I spent hours cleaning, no friends over, curfew is 8pm, 801 you're not allowed in. Just stay out. You've done everything I asked, you don't deserve your room, you get the garage. And you need to pay some rent to live under this roof, so you need to get a job. Oh, you got a job, okay, move out, if your stuff is here by the time I get home, it's going in the trash. Nobody in my house was allowed to get the mail except my dad. Doesn't matter what time he got home. Leave the mail in the mailbox. He would also personally open all the mail no matter the recipient. He would always know if anyone touched it. Ass loads of hidden debt. Or hidden child support payments. I once got grounded for 2 months because my school bus was late. Edit, backstory, I was 12 years old when this happened. A couple of kids almost got into a fist fight before the school left the parking lot, and the bus driver had to get the principal to break it up and escort them back into the school. The bus driver lectured us about fighting before driving us home. This caused us to be 30 minutes late. When I explained this to my mother, she blamed the whole situation on me, which was completely irrational, because 1. I barely knew the kids who were involved. 2. I was an introvert slash bookworm type who never got into a fight, and 3. If I had been in the fight, I would have been taken to the principal's office for punishment instead of being allowed to ride the bus home. She made a rule that I would be grounded every time the bus was late going forward, regardless of the reasoning. I grew up in the northeast part of the US, so even when the bus driver had to drive home slowly because of snow, I would still get punished. Needless to say, I wasn't allowed out of the house much in middle school and high school. Had to get home before the sunset. Even though I went to school an hour and a half away and would get home at the same time each day, but always found myself in trouble during winter. No one in the house was allowed to shave or have a razor at all. I could go to a barber or shave at a friend's house, but had my PC taken away when I tried at home. I still don't understand my mother's logic behind this one. I wasn't allowed to shave my legs. I guess my mom's thinking was that all the hair would serve as boy repellent. It wasn't necessary though. My personality was more than enough to keep me from getting laid. My grandmother made me write out the encyclopedia entry on witchcraft when she found out I had read the first four Harry Potter books, if that counts. My parents were all over the place with strictness. When I was old enough to drive, my younger sister and I would drive to McDonald's, just a few miles away. My parents would admonish us, whatever you do, do not eat french fries in the car. Invariably, we would get home. They would run out, open the car doors, sniff, and start screaming at us for eating french fries in the car. We never did. I once got grounded because I did the dishes without having to be reminded. My mom said that I was trying to manipulate her, and that I must have only done it because I was trying to get something out of her. 
In reality, all I really wanted out of her was to stop yelling at me about how I never do the dishes without having to be reminded. My dad wouldn't let me go out at all. The only time he would let me leave the house was to walk to school, and even then, he had to walk me to the entrance. Was teased for it all the time. Due to my isolated upbringing, I'm very socially awkward, and he wonders why I won't go out and find myself a partner. He never raised my sisters that way, just me. He also wouldn't let me chew gum. He would flip out. He has physically pried my mouth open to take the gum out. He is such a bizarre, controlling man. Something less serious. My mom was paranoid, everyone and everything was a kidnapper. She hated the mailman on our route. So, when I was young, 3-4 years old, my mom told me it was illegal to be outside when the mail came. Around 11-15 every day, I'd see that truck coming. I'd hightail it inside the house, terrified I would be spotted. Fast forward 30 years. I still genuinely feel a tinge of panic in the smallest recesses of the back of my brain when I see the mailman arrive. Only now it's overpowered by the excitement of my latest Amazon package I really don't need. My dad was raised with the idea that kids essentially have no opinion, which he passed on to my sister and I. If we were doing anything and he or my mom needed us to do something else, we were expected to immediately drop it and go do the other thing. Which doesn't sound that bad, until I'd be in the middle of painting or something else messy, be called to do dishes, then in the middle of dishes be called to clean up the original mess, then go to clean that up and be yelled at for not finishing dishes. And lord help me if I said, just a minute, or anything of that ilk. After I turned 9 years old, I wasn't allowed to watch cartoons anymore. I hated my dad for it. Did he tell you why, or no? Yes, it was because that's not what men did. He was your typical dad that forced society's standard masculinity down my throat. I definitely rebelled and still watched cartoons. I'm 24 and still enjoy a good cartoon or anime. I wasn't allowed to leave my room. I could go to the bathroom or kitchen, but I better have a reason to be there. My stepdad was like this about the living room for some reason. Why are you in here? I don't know, I'm reading on the couch. Why? I don't know, go to your room, you're grounded for 3 weeks. Smart ass goddamn mouth. Yeah? Just easier to confine after that happens a few times. My mom was absolutely obsessed with clean feet. Every day before school, she would make sure we got in the bath and cleaned our feet. I know most of you people are like, yeah, well when I take a shower I'm already standing in soapy water, so good enough, but that attitude would get your face slapped off around my mom. She'd have the bath full of scalding hot water every morning, and the first thing would we do, before eating, before showering, before changing into our clothes is dip our feet in that too hot water. Then my mom would load our feet up with this really strong smelling soap from some specialty store or something, because I've never seen it anywhere else, and she would scrub every square micro inch of our feet with this stiff bristled big toothbrush thing. Maybe it was for cleaning horse teeth, I don't know. It hurt so bad. The water was too hot, the soap stung, and the brushing was too intense. I never got used to it but I couldn't talk back or avoid it either. If I tried to get out of it or complain about it, bam. Slapped across the face. Complain about the slap? Boom. Grounded from TV, the computer, friends, and books. It wasn't until I left for college, did I experience what it was like to not thoroughly clean my feet every single morning. It felt liberating. I even walked around without socks sometimes, my mom always made us wear two pairs. I still had my feet scrubbed like hell when I came home to visit though. Only those times it felt good, as if they needed a good cleaning. Even now when I see my mom, she wants to clean my feet. It's pretty great actually. Imagine going to the dentist to get your teeth cleaned, but it's for your feet instead. My mom and I didn't get along, and she did this count to three thing. I used to get in trouble for stuff I didn't do, so I got sent to my room a lot. I would then refuse to go there, so she came up with this rule where she would add an extra hour every time I talked back after she got to 3. I ended up spending 8 hours in my room once because my sister lied about me doing something. 
If you didn't instantly say what you wanted to eat, my father would cook onions and garlic. He didn't like people wasting his time. I had a ton of absurd rules growing up, too many to just list one. No eating of birthday cupcakes at school. No giving or receiving of birthday presents. No dressing up for Halloween or going trick or treating. No Christmas presents. Must get up every Saturday morning, put on a full suit and tie no matter the heat, and knock on strangers doors to try to give them propaganda for a cult. Not allowed to have friends who weren't in said cult. Threatened with disownment if I ever wanted out of said cult. I couldn't shave my legs until I was 16. I did when I was 12. Mom found out and grounded me. I had to ask to get a drink of anything or eat anything. Couldn't go anywhere unless my little brother could go with too, or if he had a play date. If he didn't have anyone to play with, then I couldn't either. We are 8 years apart. I had dark dark hair. Everyone was shaving in 8th grade and mocking me. I still wasn't allowed to shave, and my light haired mom didn't understand why it was such a big deal. We used my dad's razor until he lost his shit and made her buy us razors. It was never explicitly stated or anything, but I was never allowed to have a bad day, or feel upset about anything. I was diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety during high school. Got home from the doctor, and my mother told me that she couldn't love me anymore, and that I didn't have a right to feel like that. Would get screamed at almost every day about how ungrateful I was, and to snap out of this ducking phase. She forced me to give her my passwords for Facebook, Skype and pretty much everything else, and would religiously log on every night to read through my private messages, to see what I was talking about. Had to have all electronic devices confiscated after 9pm, this caused a number of late assignment submissions at school. I ended up burying my mental illness for a few years, didn't let my parents anywhere near what my feelings were doing. Fast forward, now in first year of university. Started hearing voices and seeing things thinking about dying on a more than daily basis. Turned 18, got myself to hospital and got prescriptions I've needed for years. It's been almost a year since then, and while I'm still fairly unwell, I'm doing a little better. I was raised religious, and my mom invented a concept called microsinning. Home by 11, make it home at 10.50, punished because it was too close to 11 and you're being defiant. My parents were super laid back, but my mother's stepdad Larry could be a huge asshole. She told me that one morning, as a kid, she was given a chocolate covered donut, and, as a kid will do, decided to start nibbling off the chocolate. Larry decided this pissed him the duck off, and asked her promptly to stop eating the donut like that. Oh, just let her eat the donut how she wants, said mom's mom washing dishes. Kid mother continues to eat chocolate around the edges. Larry then shoots up shouting, knock that off, and ducking pitches his morning cup of coffee across the kitchen, where it explodes on the wall next to mom's mom. I'm thankful that Larry was not in my mother's life for long. Sort of an opposite one, I grew up thinking my parents were very strict, and would always ask to do anything before doing anything. They always said yes, and some of the things they started to say, you know you don't have to ask for that, but I did anyway no idea why I did that, they really weren't strict at all. My parents weren't really strict, didn't have to be, but one of the dumbest rules I ever had to endure was I had to wear socks at all times, because my stepdad hated me walking around with bare feet. It was only me too, my mom could be barefoot, my younger half brother could be barefoot, but I couldn't. To this day, I ducking hate wearing socks unless I have shoes on. I couldn't brush my teeth after breakfast on school mornings. I had braces, and my mom wouldn't let me brush my teeth after breakfast in fear of us being late for school. I offered to make my own breakfast earlier in the morning in order to compensate, so I could get all the gunk out of my braces after eating. However, when I made my breakfast the next morning, she revoked my ride to school privilege. Had to ride my bike to school every day from then on. Luckily my school wasn't a long ride, but rainy days sucked. It was my punishment for being disobedient. My time to shine. No nail polish, no tights under dresses, no drinking tea, not allowed to watch anything with any cursing, had to call my parents sir and ma'am, 
Now they are upset that I call them this instead of mom and dad, but it's what they ask me to do. Bedtime of 9.30 until I was 18. Parents took my phone at 9pm every night when I was in high school, and read through all of my texts, opening my bank statements, not a rule. But my parents would read my diary and go through my computer, and once left video cameras up while I was hanging out with a friend and talking. They loved to repeat things I had said or written to me, just to let me know that I had no privacy. In elementary school, my parents sat me down and said, We just want you to know, if you get pregnant while living with us, we will kick you out. My parents gave my dog away while I was at school one day without telling me. I was nine. And these days they wonder why I never want to share anything with them. Attended church three times on Sunday, 9am, 11am and 7pm, followed by Bible study Tuesday nights and youth group Friday nights. I can count on one hand the times I missed attending from birth until I moved out at 17. I haven't been back since.